following the discussion again, the previous meeting of the committee um, the report will be presented to members by the chief information officer. That next part will be referred to next month in email. Thank you. So, um, that's item 2.2c. Uh, use of work was undertaken on organisational culture. This was, a, an order, this was a, an order that was undertaken um, directly relating to the focus on issues identified within the new culture statement for 2015 16. It was undertaken in conjunction with officers from within HR and from the local development. Uh, and a number of actions were agreed with management following the audit to improve system <coughs> operation. These included um, embedding organisational vision and values, performance appraisals, and staff development systems. Training, as well as some issues in relation to sort of how we get uh, information from staff surveys and actually that in informal plans. Senior management have clearly demonstrated a very strong commitment to addressing the actions they get in line with a number already in progress. Further actions taken will continue to monitor ourselves uh, and will be reported through the corporate governance group uh, and also in this committee. So we'll continue to keep you uh, abreast of the actions you take. And 2.2c, um, I may make reference to the annual government statement where I identify the work that's internal order will be taken to support the production of the statements. Um, this is included in targeted reviews, testing for compliance with the set of salt of living and governance guidance, as well as supporting senior management in the assessment and monitoring of the significant governance issues. The annual government statement is presented as a separate report uh, to this committee and elsewhere on the agenda. 2.2e, uh, I refer to the public sector internal audit standards. Um, you'll be aware that uh, we need to comply with the requirements of the public sector internal audit standards. Um, internal audit providers to public sector organisations that require to have a, an external quality assurance process in place. You will recall that I've been working very closely with colleagues from across the Northwest region to develop and implement this process before the 2018 deadline. The current position is that a template for this has now been developed and endorsed by the SIFA, the Chartered Institute for Internal Officers, and is to be piloted across three Northwest policies prior to full implementation rollouts across the region from 2016 and 17. To support this work, we demonstrate the action that I have taken to ensure that World Internal Officers continues to maintain the high quality standards. I've developed a quality assurance and development program that is again presented to this committee elsewhere on the agenda. But summarise and bring to your attention uh, the actions that we take to ensure that we continue to provide a service that I feel we might with the investors out there and certainly uh, ticks all the boxes in terms of the public sector general standards. Um, if we move on to 2.2f where I um, draw to your attention information related to debt and write-offs. Previous meeting in this committee, uh, some members sought clarification regarding the role of internal audit and the uh, of this distinctive committee in relation to the debt writing system. Um, what I attempt to do within the report is clarify this position for you. Um, in short, internal audit is not directly involved in uh, the, the actual system of write off, other than to review and test the effectiveness of the actual systems of the CD policy unit in operation and report on this to the development team officers, identifying the actions uh, for, for, for them to implement. The role of this committee is to ensure that, that you obtain appropriate assurances from the self and from officers in relation to those systems and their effectiveness, um, and that any areas of action are identified by ourselves in terms of it are properly addressed within a time meeting and a proper nature. Um, 2.2G. Oh, sorry, yeah. um, I do notice that you refer uh, to the last paragraph. Thank you. 
or the certainly have a role, and that's why I was about to see that in the clip, in making sure that these things are being investigated and where it is possible to have that item on, we should be written on.
Show 17, of course, this is where I identify the performance data in relation to the delivery of the internal audit service. And you'll know that it's well time we just talked about the select shortfall in terms of delivery. Um, feedback from clients remains uh, very good with all the key actions identified on the report being agreed. Uh, and client satisfaction levels again remain consistently high, it's something I'm not going to break as well. Uh, and finally, in section 2.5, the report on page 18 identifies some of the continuing improvements that were being made to the delivery of the internal audit service. Uh, as you know, that I'll be aware, um, I bring these sort of uh, developments to you on a sort of third regular basis. They're constantly changing, they're constantly evolving to reflect sort of what is effectively sort of evolving and developing best practice. Um, the public sector internal audit standards are brought with it sort of more sort of, uh, sort of testing and demanding or challenging for a regime on that, which we're sort of uh, addressing. But um, and it, it also just demonstrates to you that, that you know, the assurances that you place in those are sort of uh, found on so it continues to be the, the sort of uh, quality experience. Um, I'm, I'm happy to sort of leave it there for a moment, but I'm very happy to take the questions that you might have place to any of the questions.
so we thought we work with uh, our, our, our employee groups, uh, we share with the trade unions, uh, and we actually have a <coughs> workforce engagement um, group, uh, which I chair, uh, which actually addresses many of the issues that are raised uh, through the staff survey uh, in order to, to improve and to have, the, have an effective response to that particular survey. So can I ask you, Sir, if it's going to the workforce and there's consultative groups and stuff, we have to go to be four or five years ago and the Mori survey of staff and results are available to members. Is the document is a summary or a document available for the members? Sorry, I can't check sure, because it's uh, it's over a year ago since the survey was actually completed. Um Mori did produce um, a summary format for us. Can I look into it to see what this is like? Was it members interested in We'll see. Uh, uh, but certainly, certainly we are working on the action plan uh, to reassure members around that. So, so it's the information uh, that was captured wasn't lost in terms of that program. Okay. More questions?
across the Northwest region with uh, my colleagues to develop a framework that we could utilize uh, as a framework that, that we're now in a position where we're rolling out across a number of pilots and consultants once we've gleaned the information back from how those pilots went and whether they're effective or not and share that with SIPRA and the uh, IEA will then roll out.
to this uh, committee uh, back in June uh, as a track uh, when we took on board those clients uh, and now uh, uh, included in, within those. Um, the actual annual government statement itself uh, has 2.2 highlights is that the fix fits within the six core principles of good governance and hopefully what we'll see throughout the document is how those are referenced to uh, and, and actually supported. I think the key at the bottom of the, the, the paragraph three is about the annual government statement being based on level of supporting evidence uh, and also assurance that that is given uh, by a range of people which I'll touch on in a second, particularly uh, in the same order. Um, so it's clear, and I think it links back to the compliance uh, issue that I've just been referring to about being a bigger system for government, for example. Uh, it's actually not all its responsibility to do that, it's actually everybody's responsibility to do that. I think what we're trying to develop here is a compliance culture uh, where people do follow it, whether there's a, 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 a carrot or a stick ring. So hopefully we've got some, some evidence of that bearing fruit. And the key here is that the assessment that we have in front of us uh, is not something uh, that, that we would just like to see, it's something that has been rigorously tested. So I think the good news is that we, we do have uh, in front of you today a degree of evidence uh, in terms of our improvements uh, and our annual government statement. Um, hopefully it does provide uh, you as committee members uh, assurances that in your role uh, amongst this committee that, 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 that you're seeing the product and the outcome what you've been trying to drive into the improvement of the overall governance of, of the organisation for, for the last couple of years. Uh, so 3.2, uh, we highlight that, that evidence I was referring to about how, how that's taken into account. Clearly Mark and his team provide a great deal of, uh, of, of interaction with us in terms of challenge, uh, but also support as well. Uh, we do ensure that the governance processes are in place, and it highlights within the report some of the structures that we have there, and I'll touch on those in a second. Uh, we do. Uh, Rigorously, and this is obligatory. Uh, Mark does, does work with us to, for chief officers and our managers to provide assurance statements. They are compliant with, with, with our, our, our overarching governance arrangements. Uh, and finally, of course, any of the external uh, arrangements that do take place during the year, we have through external audit and the LGA, finding what's there, CQC, etc., uh, then they would actually impact and have the input into the annual governance statement. In terms of to the statement itself, uh, on page 56 of, of, of paragraph 3, uh, we begin to set out uh, what we believe to be, to be uh, of evidence. Uh, you know, our internal governance controls have been strengthened. Uh, we have identified four governance issues in 2014-15. I'm going to refer to those in a second. That's an improved position on the five that we had last year and the 15 that we had the year before. Um, and I'm pleased to say that in terms of the, the asset management strategy, that's the one that's, that has uh, actually been removed from our governance issues because we have now had that in place, seen some significant improvements in terms of our capital receipts, uh, and they will continue to uh, move forward uh, over the next couple of years in terms of our disposal of assets and releasing in, in, in excess of £20 million pounds that they give the money uh, to, to, to the authority. Good news is as well, there have been no new governance issues that have been identified in this process. Uh, which actually demonstrates that we, we are stable, uh, we have embedded uh, the government's arrangements that, that we've been trying to achieve and, and consolidated those arrangements to strengthen our governments. And the four remaining issues outstanding relate to procurement, ICT business continuity, absence management and organisational culture. And actually throughout this evening's reports uh, you'll see those peppered back because they're obviously picked up through marks uh, which that relates to, to us in terms of making sure that progress is being made. And indeed, uh, for, for members who are being part of the uh, Transformation Resources Policy Performance Committee, uh, they can be on some of those issues as well. Um, obviously, as part of that, in terms of further evidence, uh, we did uh, receive the Most Improved Council of the Year Award at the Local Public Chronicle Awards earlier uh, this year. Uh, and I guess that recognises that from, from our peers that improvements have been achieved. Uh, but in addition, we have a short list of three other awards in the detail there in terms of entrepreneurialism, efficiency and driving the economic growth. So right across uh, the council of the framework, um, we, we are starting to be recognised uh, as being, being at the forefront of some of those developments. And again, you know, Mark's position before in terms of the previous reports, stating that other authorities are starting to look at the world now in terms of how they can improve things. And we do actually have a visit from a, a local authority to Norwich just to, to, to work with and uh, find out from us uh, how we've made that improvement uh, over the past, uh, past two years or so. Uh, 
in terms of the principles that we refer to in, in paragraph two of the report, uh, focusing on the purpose of the authority and the outcomes for the community, uh, it's clear we can demonstrate that we are focusing on outcomes for the community. We do have a longer term vision for the area. Uh, we originally had a three year corporate plan that was refreshed uh, towards the end of last year. And of course, we, we, we now have our, our, our 2020 vision uh, that we have in place, uh, which, which will set us uh, up, up until uh, 2020. We review our performance against those uh, in terms of our corporate plan on a monthly basis through our the strategic leadership team uh, and also report to cabinet on a quarterly basis. And of course, the policy and performance committees receive their performance reports on a regular basis as part of the scrutiny process. Council is also focused now on its future plans and how we can deliver those effectively, very much in, in, in partnership, uh, but very much focused on outcomes uh, for residents uh, so, that, so that we can conclude and support them uh, in, in their development. Alongside of this, we have the Leading Term Financial Strategy, which is agreed in February 2015. Uh, we are working towards uh, creating now a five year Leading Term Financial Strategy, which again will sit alongside our delivery plan. So, for further evidence, uh, I believe in terms of how we are making sure uh, that, that we have strong governance uh, and any, any uh, investments that we wish to make for the prospect uh, and, and for business case if they choose to follow those. We do have as well, uh, clearly in the last two years, uh, major input into the uh, city region um, and I think the, the, the economic development side of that in particular, the, the chair uh, being the council leader, uh, again gives confidence I think, that other organisations are starting to see where uh, as being, a, being an organisation uh, that, that is now uh, very much consolidating its position in regards to its government's arrangements. Principle two uh, talks about the members and officers working together, I, I guess you know, the, the audit risk management committee can use one of those particular areas where we do see that uh, partnership arrangement taking place. Um, talks about the political leadership, but I guess in my view this particular committee is that it, it stands as a, as a, as a test bed for, 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 for uh, making sure that officers and, uh, and cabinets are held to account for the decisions that they take, uh, irrespective of, uh, of any party politics. And I think that stands well in terms of an independent kind of overview of this. Uh, our constitution provides that clear framework. We have a member-led standards and constitutional oversight committee. We have the three law policy performance committees, uh, which have post and pre decision scrutiny taking place. Uh, but indeed, we also have uh, dedicated planning sessions with, uh, between the strategic leadership team and cabinet, uh, which haven't perhaps been material in, in previous years. And finally, we have our regular based portfolio briefings, uh, and for this particular area, uh, Council Adam McCracklin. Uh, meets with us on a regular basis and monthly basis uh, and at those meetings both Mark and Mike uh, who have been seen so present many uh, of the challenges uh, that we're facing in order to consolidate our position. Principle three, uh, our values of the authority demonstrating good, good uh, governance through our behaviour. We've got our agreed set of organisational values and behaviours. We've adopted the new performance appraisal pro process. We have the constitution that sets out the code of conduct for members. We've got our grievance and confidential reporting policy. We've launched our new instrument, which gives promise to those policies. And we have a new dignity of life policy, which was also implemented in the last year. In terms of the transparency of our decisions, uh, which are subject to effective scrutiny and risk, uh, we have uh, reviewed and refreshed our corporate risk management policy, which we report on the agenda this evening, which refers to that. Council's participate in the benchmarking exercise, which actually sets us uh, in very good position uh, with regard to how we can develop our risk management. And clearly, as, as, as members of the health committee, you provide some significant responsibilities uh, towards our risk management process uh, and also provide that level of scrutiny for the decisions that we take, uh, both as officers and, and, and for making a cabinet executive. Um, principle five, development capacity and capability of members. Uh, we began our ambitious program last year of transformation uh, around future council to be more modern council. We've achieved that within a year, we've achieved that within budget, uh, and we're now actually building on that uh, for, for, for ensuring that our 2020 vision is achieved. And finally, in terms of principle six, engaging local people, you see that over 8,000 responses received as part of the budget consultation exercise last year, uh, achieving the highest levels of satisfaction across the country. Uh, and finally, in terms of that, we also work very closely with our uh, constituency areas, uh, our partner agencies, uh, making sure that we can 
might take on to on board uh, the, the, the views of those particular organisations and, 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 uh, and communities. Finally, just a, just a couple of comments that have made, Chair, just to, to talk about the corporate management insurance uh, on page 62. This really sets out some of the management arrangements that are in place to keep governance and risk uh, higher on the agenda. I talked more about the corporate governance group. We talked about the chief information officer, who's, who's the senior information risk owner. Uh, so all of those uh, officer held posts that you'd expect to be in place are in place with some significant uh, uh, support uh, to ensure that we deliver. More importantly, very clear roles for councillors too. Uh, they're set out on page 53, we've got to be councillors, we've come up with this committee, uh, but also through the Standards and Constitutional Oversight Committee. Our external auditors provide a, a, exactly what you'd expect in terms of that audit arrangement. Uh, but I think an important issue as well is also the, the rules role in terms of being a responsible authority in the Merseyside Pension Fund uh, and the clean up health uh, in terms of their governance compliance statement. Hopefully, provides a strong reputation for Brill across the 130 of the bodies of that particular organisation. And finally, at item 6, Chair, the four governance issues are uh, highlighted again and they are addressed as per the attached action plan. Final thing I would say is I do think that this, is a positive, this is a positive report. I do think it fits neatly with our external orders of view, which will be debated at our meeting. That's it. Any questions, sir? Good. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, you briefly mentioned the problem of absence management as highlighted on page 68 of the report at the bottom there. Um, clearly, it's an emotional issue that we've discussed in the past, and it gets a lot of the question, obviously, I've been asked about it by members of my own constituency, of my own ward. Um, what can be done, do you think, and what is being done to try and improve the situation compared to the actions of other local authorities? I'm personal perspective, I've sort of this in the past, it was a difficult problem, but I think it does need to address it, and to try and find a cause of it. Thanks very much, David. It is, you're absolutely right, it's a, it's a very important measure in terms of a, a, a particular um, organisation. Um, we, we were just off our target figure last year in terms of our, 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 our absence management. So the positive side to that is that when we compare ourselves to other local authorities in the North West, uh, of, the, of the 17, I think it's the it, who actually subscribe to the, the North West Employers uh, graph. We were actually towards the, towards the latter end of that in, in recent years. We're now actually seventh on that target in a cluster of uh, five, six, seven, eight, uh, all around the same, the same percentage point. So we've made significant strides and improvements uh, in the last couple of years, and uh, that's clearly been positive. However, uh, you know, we certainly don't take that position lightly. We want it to be the best in the Northwest in terms of that. I think there are a number of elements which we're trying to introduce. First of all, is in terms of the support that we provide to individuals and, and clinic return to work interviews, providing a safe working environment, improving the standards of, of, of accommodation, uh, for example, like staff working, uh, improving the, the, the opportunity when, when they're loan workers, for, for example, uh, to provide, hopefully, all of the self health and safety aspects that we can anticipate a large organisation to do. When people do fall into a path, it's about providing the right level of support as well. So, so it is about making sure that the managers are really in contact uh, with the individuals who may be off sick. Uh, it is making sure that, uh, that, that they take the responsibility seriously as that. But also